Good night. Good night, good night, everyone. We are on this section, I mean, this is session number three of this week. Uh, remember that we are on the section number three of the platform and we are going to work on the topics that we have there. Um, and we are going to begin a new topic today that is related also to the count and non count nouns. That is the topic that we were developing uh, yesterday. And in this one, we are going to learn different expressions or different words that we are going to use uh, with um, some specific words that we have on the count and non count nouns. Son uh, palabras, verdad, que vamos a utilizar eh, específicamente para cada una de estas uh, de estos términos, ¿verdad? Los nombres contables y no contables. Eh, son palabras o frases, ¿verdad? Que tienen como un sentido específico eh, para este tema. Así que vamos a empezar con esa parte. But I need to uh, the other participants to join the meeting. So we are going to wait for them uh, like one minute more. And then I'm going to put a video that we have on the platform and we are going to begin with the video because on that um, that conversation, we are going to have some elements that we need to learn uh, for this topic. So we are going to wait a minute for the other participants to come and then we're going to begin with the conversation. Okay, we are going to begin then uh, with the conversation that we have on the platform. Um, is related to something that we can see on the platform also, that is the use of the uh, places in town. So in this case, we are going to listen to someone that is in a new apartment and she is like expressing the ideas that she has about that place. So we're going to listen the conversation and then we are going to make like um discussion about the elements that we can find on the conversation. So let's listen the conversation and also we are going to read the information that we have on that conversation. So pay attention to the conversation. so it's very convenient. Downtown? In this session, participants will listen to a conversation about a neighborhood. Hi again. This time we'll study how many and how much. Please notice how they ask questions and how they answer them. 
Remember, count nouns and non-count nouns make the difference. How do you like your new apartment? I love it. It's downtown, so it's very convenient. Downtown? Is there much noise? Oh, no, there isn't any. I live on the fifth floor. How many restaurants are there near your place? A lot. In fact, there's an excellent Korean place just around the corner. What about parking? Well, there aren't many parking garages, but I usually find a place on the street. Is there much crime? No, it's pretty safe. Hold on. That's my car alarm. I'll call you back later. Oh, no, there isn't. Okay, we have here the conversation and we have two people that are talking about um, the new neighborhood and also the new place in which she is living. And we have different elements that we need to pay attention to because um, in this conversation, we have some elements that we are going to use for uh, the topic there is and there are. Hablábamos de el uso del there is y el there are y que también se utilizaban con eh, nombres contables y nombres no contables. También decíamos que se utilizaban con nombres plurales y con nombres singulares. So, in this case, we have different things on the uh, statements on in the questions that we have in this conversation. So, in this case, we have Nick and Pam that are talking about the new apartment. And in this case, we have the following statements. How do you like your new apartment? I love it. It's downtown, so it's very convenient. In this case, that information is not um, important for us right now. Then it says, downtown, here is the question. Is there much noise? Aquí tenemos una pregunta que nos interesa. Is there much noise? Oh, no, there isn't any. I live on the fifth floor. Again, another statement. There isn't any. How many restaurants are there near your place? Another one. How many restaurants are there near your place? Now, a lot. In fact, there is an excellent Korean place just around the corner. There is an excellent Korean place. What about parking? Well, there aren't many. Ahí tenemos otra. There aren't many parking garage. Um, is there much crime? Is there much crime? No, it's pretty safe. Hold on. That's my car alarm. Uh, I will call you back later. En este caso tenemos eh, diferentes preguntas porque básicamente tenemos varias preguntas acá con el uso del there is any or there is much, or there is many. Y si se fijan, hay, um, en este caso, um, algunos datos importantes, porque vemos que en este caso estamos hablando que el much lo utilizamos con nombres no contables. There is much noise, hay mucho ruido. En este caso, el ruido, pues obviamente, no es un nombre contable. Then we have how many restaurants? Estamos hablando de restaurantes, de cosas físicas. That is countable nouns. And then there aren't many parking garage. Ella está hablando que no hay muchos parqueos. Y obviamente son espacios físicos. So in that case, we have like the application of the information in a daily life conversation. So we are going to begin with the new topic that we are going to develop today. And that is the topic of the quantifiers. So give me a moment. I'm going to stop this one. And I'm going to go to the document.
So in this case, we are going to talk to talk about the quantifiers and a, what is the use that we can give to these quantifiers and also um, why they are important for this topic. Vamos a hablar de los cuantificadores, por qué son importantes, qué significa cada uno de ellos, en qué momento lo podemos utilizar, ¿verdad? En, en nuestra conversación. Y vamos a ver ejemplos de cada uno de ellos. En este caso, I'm going to put here some of the words that we have uh, as quantifiers. En este caso, tenemos palabras como some, any, much, many, a lot, in this case, we have a few, but I don't need this space. Oh. A few and a little. O en este caso puede ser solo few, solo little. Ok. En este caso tenemos esas palabras que son las que vamos a utilizar como quantifiers. Ahora las vamos a dividir por categorías. Vamos a empezar con la categoría A, B, luego C y D. Vamos a hacerlo en cuatro categorías. We are going to see category A. That is the first thing, like this, I think, yes. Is the use of some and any. Vamos a ver cuál es el uso que le vamos a dar a las palabras some, any, y algunos ejemplos, ¿verdad?, que tengan que ver con el uso de esas palabras. So, some and any are used before plural nouns and uncountable nouns to talk about an indefinite quantity. Estamos hablando que lo vamos a utilizar en nombres plurales y nombres no contables para hablar acerca de una cantidad indefinida. O sea, no tenemos como idea de cuánto es, sino que puede ser indefinido. In this case, we have some examples. And we have some letters. Some money. Any letters. Any money. Algunas cartas, algún dinero, pero en este caso no sabemos exactamente cuál es la cantidad de cartas y cuál es la cantidad de dinero. In this case, some is used in affirmative sentences. El some lo vamos a utilizar con oraciones afirmativas. And we have also examples. And it says, there are some letters for you. There are some letters for you. And I've got some money. En este caso son oraciones afirmativas, positivas. Also, some is used in questions when we want to encourage people to say yes. For example, in requests and offers. Vamos a utilizar también el some en preguntas, pero en este caso son preguntas específicas cuando queremos que la otra persona diga que sí. Y va a ser más que todo para... Eh, ofertas y para peticiones donde nosotros queremos que la persona diga que sí
And we are going to see some examples. And it says, can you let me have some paper? Can you let me have some paper? Would you like some more tea? Have you got some paper I could have, please? Now, in this case, we're going to see uh, the use of any and how can we apply this information in examples. So in this case, any is used in negative. Ahora, tenemos some para afirmaciones, para oraciones afirmativas. Y el any lo vamos a utilizar en... Eh, oraciones negativas y en preguntas. And we are going to see some examples. Are there any new stories in your in your store are there any news i mean stories in your store is there anything in the cupboard I don't have any news stories for you. I, I don't have new stories for you. This one is a negative. And the last one, there isn't any T in the cupboard. So in this case, we're going to apply the information of any with questions and also with negative statements. Any also is used after words with negative meaning. En este caso, como ya estamos diciendo que vamos a utilizar el any para los negativos, también lo vamos a utilizar para palabras que contengan eh, significados negativos. And we have some examples. It says, I found a taxi. Ah, but in this case, we are going to see uh, what are the words that we are going to use that they have negative meanings. In este caso, tenemos palabras con eh, significados negativos. Y esas palabras pueden ser without, eh, never. Seldom, readily, and hardly. 
So in this case, I found a taxi without any trouble. So in this case, if you can see the statement is not negative, but we have a negative word. No es, un, no es una oración negativa, porque no estamos hablando de una oración negativa. Primero, su estructura no es negativa y segundo, su significado tampoco, ya que dice encontré un taxi sin problema alguno. Ahora, la palabra nada más es la que tiene una connotación negativa, pero no es que nuestra oración en sí sea negativa. Next one, you never do any homework. And the next one, there are hardly any eggs left. Now, we are going to talk about the use of many, I mean, the use of much and many, but in this case, it's mostly in question and negative. Um, much is used with uncountable nouns and many is used with countable plural nouns. Tenemos también que el uso del much y el many lo vamos a utilizar en preguntas y también en, en oraciones negativas. En el caso del much, lo vamos a utilizar con nombres no contables y el many lo vamos a utilizar con nombres contables plurales. That is letter B. Much and many. So in this case, we have uh, some examples. And we have the first one. It says, is there much rice left? Is there much rice left? Ha sobrado mucho arroz, podemos decirlo en, esta, en este contexto. Um, we haven't got much rice left. No ha quedado mucho arroz, ¿verdad? No ha sobrado mucho arroz. Has he got many books? He hasn't got many books. In this case, we are going to see something very specific. 
And it says that we often use much and many in affirmative sentence after to, as, so, and very. En este caso también utilizamos el much y el many um, en oraciones afirmativas después, ¿verdad? En este caso. Um, o oh, no, no es después, es antes de. Eh, no, es. Yes, es after. Eh, some specific words. Vamos a utilizar el much, el much y el many con eh, eh, estas palabras como lo es el as, el so, el to y el very. Y lo vamos a utilizar después de estas cuando eh, estemos hablando de oraciones afirmativas. O sea, cuando nosotros llevemos esas palabras, sabemos que después de esas palabritas vamos a poner nuestro much or many. Coach, eh, Tell me. creo que no se le escucha. ¿Alguien más no está escuchando? No, Coach, no se le escucha. No se le escucha. Yo, oh, sí bueno. escucha, yo, yo sí le escucho, Quizás es, la señal, es tu señal, Adonai. Igual, Igual. yo sí le escucho. Ah, Puede pues ser yo tengo... tu señal. Es que no soy en mi casa. Disculpen. Pero sí se escucha. Don't worry, don't worry. That's okay. No se preocupen. Eh, son situaciones que pasan. So don't worry about that. Um, so... En este caso, ¿verdad? Cuando tengamos esas palabras, nosotros sí vemos eh, que vamos a utilizar esas, um, sí, podemos llamarlo palabras porque no llegan a frases, son eh, demasiado cortas. Vamos a utilizar el much y el many con ellas, pero vamos a ver cómo nos quedarían esas oraciones. Um, Much and many in affirmative to us so and very. And we are going to see some examples. And we have take as much, take as much milk as you want. Take as much milk as you want. Es como decir, toma toda la leche que quieras. But in this case, we're using us in this statement. But if you can see, we're going to, to use two, two times this word. Take as much as you want. Vamos a utilizarla de dos, en, en dos, ¿verdad? En dos ocasiones. Para que quede completa nuestra oración. I've got so many jobs to do today. I've got so many jobs to do today. Tengo mucho trabajo, ¿verdad? ¿Qué hacer ahora? We enjoy the party very much. We enjoy... the party very much. Disfruté mucho de la fiesta. And the last word we we've got too much milk. Obtuvimos demasiada leche. In affirmative sentence we normally use a lot of Lots of and plenty of, not much and many. En oraciones afirmativas, normalmente vamos a utilizar 
lot of, a lot of, o la palabra plenty, pero no es tan común que utilicemos much and many en oraciones afirmativas. Es más que todo con oraciones eh, negativas y con preguntas. So we're going to see the letter C. N is the use of a little. Aquí vamos a utilizar eh, la expresión a little. And we use a little to express positive idea with uncountable nouns. Ideas positivas con nombres no contables. En este caso significa pequeñas cantidades, pero algo, ¿verdad? Tenemos algo, no es que es cero, sino que son cantidades muy pequeñas. And we are going to see these examples. In this case, we have just two. There is still a little work to do. There is still a little work to do. Todavía hay un poco de trabajo que hacer. I have a little sugar in the yard. I have a little sugar in the yard. Hay un poco de azúcar en el contenedor, ¿verdad? En la jarra, en el bote, in the place in which we have the sugar. Then we use a few to express positive idea. With plural nouns. It means a small number, but some. Okay. En el primero, a little significa, o oh, lo utilizamos para expresar, ideas positivas con nombres no contables. Significa una pequeña cantidad, pero algo. En este segundo, el a few lo utilizamos para expresar ideas positivas con nombres plurales. Esto significa una, un número pequeño, pero algo, ¿verdad? Algo hay ahí, aunque sea un pequeño número. Y tenemos algunos examples. And in this case, we have the following phrases. A few students pass it because the exam is extremely difficult. Un poco o algunos estudiantes lo pasaron porque el examen estaba extremadamente difícil. In that case, I remember my students with their exam, their math exam. It was very difficult for them. 
Um, there are a few people come today. Algunas personas vinieron hoy. And the last one. <clears throat> That is letter D. En la letra D tenemos letter and few. No a little ni a few. En este caso es solo la palabra little y solo la palabra few. Little and few without A are more negative idea. Si no le agregamos la A antes de little o antes de few, significa que estamos dando una idea más negativa. Little significa no mucho. Y o, o significa también almost no. Casi no. And few means no mucho o casi no. Entonces es como llegar... Casi al final, ¿verdad? Uh, sí, en este caso es um, de una cantidad, es casi no tener nada, ¿verdad? De ese objeto o de lo que nosotros estamos hablando en nuestra oración. And we have the examples. There is little work to do. The exam is extremely difficult and a few students pass it. So in that case, we have the four uh, different information that we need to understand about the use of these words that can function as quantifiers. Um, the thing with these words is like you are going to put something related to, to the quantity. En este caso, son estas palabras que nos ayudan a entender mejor, ¿verdad? El uso de las cantidades cuando estamos hablando en inglés. So in this case, like we have more information, but we are going to have a um, couple of exercises. So in this case, I'm going to stop this one and I'm going to put what are the uh, activities that we are going to do. And in this case, um, yes, I'm going to put some images here. But give me a second. I'm going to put the activities that you are going to do. In this case, you're not going to like circle the things. You are going to tell me the answers. Remember that in some cases we have this information like for worksheets, uh, but 
In this case, we're not going to do it like this. Es más que todo para trabajarlo, ¿verdad? En hojas de papel. Pero en este caso lo vamos a hacer um, hablado, ¿verdad? Ustedes van a leer las situaciones que aparecen por ahí o las oraciones y me van a ir ayudando a darle una respuesta. So, don't worry about that. In some of these um, activities say circle, ride, and all of that things, but it is not related to that thing. But give me a moment. I'm putting the image on document. Okay, but I'm going to separate this one. It's too much. Okay, I have two and one more. Okay, I have the three different activities that we are going to perform right now. So give me a moment because I'm going to put the screen again. So this is the first thing that we're going to do. In the first one, it says, circle the correct answer. But in this case, you're just going to tell me what is the correct answer. You are going to read the statements and you are going to decide if the, um, the correct word is some or any. Vamos a leer las oraciones. Vamos a decidir si le queda mejor some o le queda mejor any a esa oración. Luego tenemos esta donde sí vamos a escribir a uh, las oraciones eh, utilizando la palabra some. En este caso son siete y usted, ahí tienen dos ejemplos, ¿verdad? De cómo lo pueden hacer o de, una, de, de otra forma que a ustedes les parezca mejor. Entonces, vamos a hacer estas dos partes primero. But I'm going to give you a couple of minutes for this one. You're going to read the statements and then you're going to tell me what is the correct answer. Después de dar la respuesta de la número uno, les voy a dar tiempo para que puedan escribir sus oraciones y esas sí las van a poner en el chat. Y las vamos a ir escribiendo. Luego vamos a ver la número tres, que yo creo que no va a quedar para mañana. So, you have five minutes for the uh, activity number one, and then you are going to tell me the answers. Tenemos cinco minutos para leer esas oraciones y decidir cuál es la respuesta correcta. So, let's go.
Okay, let's see. We are going to complete the exercise number one. In this case, uh, remember that uh, you have some of these uh, countable and uncountable nouns. And also you need to, to remember in which cases we are going to use uh, these words. So in the number one, we are going to use some or any for that a statement. There aren't some or any help. Any. Any. Any, okay. In the number two, do you know some or any Americans? Some. Some. Okay, some. Then, we need some or any more coffee. We need some. Any more. Any more. Any. any more coffee. In this case, it's uncountable. Um, she's got uh, some or any interesting friends. Any. Some. Some, some. because some because we are talking about people. Um, oh, yeah. I didn't have some or any breakfast today. I didn't have any breakfast today. Okay, any breakfast. He hasn't done some or any work for 10 years. Any? Any, okay, any work, very good. Have you got some or any brothers and sisters? Have you got some brothers and sisters? Some, some. very good. Um, some I mean. brothers and sisters. Because we're talking about countable nouns. Then, I'm having some or any problems with my car. Any. Any, any very good. And the last one, are there some or any restaurant near here? Are there some? Some. Some restaurant. Very good. Now, in the second one, uh, you are going to write some sentences, but in this case, you are just going to use some. En este caso, solo utilizamos la palabra some. Y tenemos algunos ejemplos. Would you like some more coffee? Could I have some breath? En este caso son eh, preguntas, pero ustedes pueden utilizar cualquier oración. Así como en el caso de eh, oraciones simples, pero más que todo preguntas. Sale mejor, es, es, es mejor. En este caso tenemos ask for coffee. Ustedes tienen que preguntar por café. Then you are going to offer eh, read. Se van a ofrecer para leer. Offer rice. Ofrecemos arroz. Ask for tomatoes. Vamos a preguntar o pedir uh, tomates. Offer more potatoes. Vamos a ofrecer más papas. We are going to ask for milk and ask for oil. Vamos a hacer preguntas. Vamos a pedir algunas cosas y vamos a ofrecer algunas otras. Entonces, vamos a ver esa parte. Tenemos un par de minutos. No vamos a lograr terminarlas todas, pero podemos comenzar eh, anotando nuestras preguntas y si ustedes ya tienen algunas, las ponen en el chat y les vamos a ir poniendo en el documento. Si no logramos terminar, lo vamos a hacer al inicio de la sesión de mañana. So, don't worry. You can begin writing your questions with this information that we have here. Just using the word thumb.
Esa vamos a ir escribiendo una por una en el chat o cuando ya las tengamos todas. Si usted ya tiene algunas, usted las puede poner, ahí no hay problema. Usted le puede poner número y las pone. No es necesario que las tenga todas de una sola vez. Ok, I'm going to write the first one because... Uh, we have like four minutes and we are going to have some of, ex of these examples on the document. So we have for the number one, I uh, could I have some coffee? For the number one, another here. Can you give me some coffee? Give me some coffee. And we are going to add the word please. It's better. Like this. Eh, yes. We are going to have a session tomorrow. Vamos a tener la sesión mañana. El día lunes sí no la vamos a tener por ser día del trabajo, pero mañana sí. Para completar la semana. Tell me. La lunes se respondría el viernes de la otra semana. Um, give me a moment. I'm going to tell you which are the, the dates. But I think, yes, we're going to do it. Or if we don't have the session on Friday, eh, we are going to have like the next week. Yes, not this week. Mm -hmm. Entonces, it said that we are going to end the sessions on May. Let's see, let's see. No, it's not May. Aha. Uh -huh. 12. Sí, vamos a reponer lo más seguro los viernes. Porque no tenemos dos. Una que es la del eh, lunes primero. Y la siguiente, la del 10. La del 10, porque el 10 tampoco vamos a tener okay. sesiones. Entonces van a ser dos que repondríamos eh, después. Ok, I have another one here. Ah, ok. Do you drink some coffee on the, in the morning? Very good. Okay, very good. We are going to have some space. And I have a question for the number seven. Can I have some oil? Okay, very good. I have this one. I'm going to move again. Um, This is the image. <laughs> no, don't worry, don't worry. Would you like a cup of coffee? Um, in this case, we are going to change a little bit because we need to, to add the word some. Uh, would you like some coffee? Would you like some coffee? Like this. Milk. Oh, number six, okay here six 
Would you like some more milk? Very good. Some more milk. Good. Book. Let me see in which number we have book, book, book. Okay. Is number two. Um, can I offer you a book to read? Mm. Can I offer you some interesting books to read like this? It's better. Okay, number four. Can I, uh, well, I have hmm, some more tomatoes or the salsa. Would you like some more potatoes? In which number we have the potatoes? Potatoes, potatoes, number five. Okay. Uh, no teacher, uh, it's a tomato, no, pot oh, no ah, potato. But we have potatoes <laughs> too, <laughs> don't worry. Potatoes too, también. <laughs> no, hay, hay tomates y hay papas. Mm -hmm. Tenemos dos, don't worry. Podemos utilizar los ambos. Number five. But we are going to stop. We are going to stop because it's time. Don't worry. We are going to continue tomorrow because it's uh, time to end the session. So I'm going to write this one and okay. we are going to end. Would you like some more potatoes? Y todas esas están bien, las que está escribiendo. Yes. They are correct. I am just adding some uh, elements to the phrases. Solo le agrego alguna cosita o le quito alguna cosita y ya están perfectas. So we are going to continue okay. with this activity tomorrow. And we are going to see more of the statements that you are writing right now. So we are going to continue with the activity tomorrow. So have a really good night and see you good tomorrow. Morning. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow.